What is going on world? Welcome back to another video where I'm checking out some uh, scientific research and some scientific studies from the past done on psychedelics. Yeah, in like the 50s and the 60s, they actually did like a lot of research and they actually documented it very well and it's all out there on the internet and right now I'm actually reading Michael Pollan's book how to change your mind and the first chapter it's like 90 pages long but he just dives into the whole history behind LSD and psychedelics and psilocybin and all these experiments that were going on and as I was going through it and reading his book I was like oh I have to check that out I have to check out the Good Friday uh, experiment I have to check out uh, um, the Harvard Psilocybin Project, which is a video I'm about to make right after this. But as I'm just going through this, there's so much... I can't believe how much is documented in the past about all of this. So I thought, instead of just going through the research myself, why not bring you guys along the journey? And the other day I was looking through uh, one of these pieces of research and I saw the Concord Prison Experiment. So today we're just going to dive into this research together and see what we can discover. So let's hop right into the Concord Prison Experiment. So if we hop on Wikipedia here, we'll go dive into some more uh, legitimate stuff. I'm pretty sure there was uh, some... Uh scientific research there but the Concord prison experiment was designed to evaluate whether the experiences produced by the psychoactive drug psilocybin derived from psilocybin mushrooms combined with psychotherapy could inspire prisoners to leave their antisocial lifestyles behind once they were released how well it worked was to be judged by comparing the uh recidivism what is this Hmm, interesting. So, uh, how well it worked was to be judged by comparing the recidivism. <laughs> recidivism is the act of a person repeating an undesirable behavior after they have either experienced negative consequences of that behavior or have been trained to extinguish that behavior. It is also used to refer to the percentage of former prisoners who are rearrested for a similar offense. Interesting. I've never heard of this. Recidivism. Devism. Divisium. How do I? I want to hear that. I want to hear the wording. How do you say? How do you say this word? Yeah, there we go. I don't want that one. How do I say it? Tell me, Google. Tell me, YouTube. Recidivism. Recidivism. <laughs> Recidivism. 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 All right, there we go. We're all sorry about that, but you just recidivism. went through all that. How well it worked has to be judged by comparing the recidivism rate of subjects who receive psilocybin with the average for other Concord inmates. Recidivism. Interesting. So staff, the experiment was conducted between 1961 to 1963 in Concord State Prison, a maximum security prison for young offenders in Concord, Massachusetts by a team of Harvard University researchers under the direction of Timothy Leary which included Michael Holling, Hollingshead and Alan Cohen, Alfred, uh, I'm not going to read all these guys' names. Um, the original study involved the administration of psilocybin to assist group physiotherapy for 32 prisoners in an effort to reduce recid, 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 oh my gosh, recidivism, recidivism rates. <laughs> oh my god. All right, results. Results at Concord State Prison suggested that 64% of the 32 subjects would report would return to prison within six months of parole. However, after six months, only 25% of those on parole had returned. Six for technical parole violations and two for new offenses. Few short-term projects with prisoners have been effective to even a minor degree. In addition, the personality test scores indicated a measurable positive change when pre- psilocybin and post psilocybin results were compared in follow-up study the results of this experiment have been largely contested by a follow-up study citing several problems including differences in the length of time after release that the study group versus the control group when compared all right so there's a little uh they called into question some of the results this study concluded that only a statistically slight improvement could be shown in his interview within the study, Leary expressed that the major lesson of the Concord experiment was that the key to a long-term reduction in overall recidivism rates might be the combination of the pre-release administration of psilocybin-assisted group physiotherapy with a comprehensive post-release follow-up program modeled on Alcoholics Anonymous groups to offer support for the released to the released prisoners. 
Hmm. All right, so not too much came out of that apparently, but uh, still, again, I find this stuff fascinating. And uh, down here, I think I saw, where is this? Uh, PDF, so abstract. So this would be the whole actual like breakdown of the study. So I'm probably gonna print this up and uh, you know dive into this a little deeper fascinated with scientific studies like this and reading what happened and just trying to see like you know as they mentioned that there were some kind there are flaws to it and i think there's a flaws to a lot of scientific studies out there and a lot of them are way too short term and there's just conclusions are being made when uh, there's very little evidence uh, very small sample groups but either way i'm going to print this up for later let's hop back here let's see if there's any videos on this recidivism recidivism Hopefully we're going to learn this work together today, guys. So let's check this out. The Concord Prison Experiment was designed to evaluate whether the experiences produced by the psychoactive drug psilocybin, derived from psilocybin mushrooms. Next. Here we go. This is the Massachusetts Correctional Institute in Concord, Massachusetts about five minutes from Henry David Thoreau's Walden Pond. Between 1961 and 1963, Concord Prison was host to an experiment by then Harvard professor Timothy Leary, along with Ralph Metzner and others, to see if the administration of psychedelic drugs prior to release from prison would lower an inmate's recidivism rate. These researchers he gathered detailed it. information on 32 prisoners, including psychological profiles, personal backgrounds, and even personality tests, before administering pharmaceutical-grade psilocybin to assist in group psychotherapy for these soon-to-be parolees. At the time, Concord State Prison records indicated that about 64% of these 32 subjects should return to prison within six months of parole. However, after six months, only eight of the 32, or about 25%, of the parolees had returned. Six for technical parole violations, and only two for new offenses. That is a big drop. Unfortunately, planned follow-ups with these parolees, including psychotherapy, were cut short by Leary and Albert's termination at Harvard. The University of Alabama and Johns Hopkins University have since collected data in their own studies that support their findings. Sweet. Well, that was a cool little video. So, yeah, apparently, I guess there's not too, too much out there compared to some of the other stuff where they were really uh, documenting a lot of the footage and things that went on. Now, if I'm missing some stuff, guys, and you guys know that there's more uh, material out there about the uh, Concord Prison Experiment, please let me know. I'd be fascinated to look into this. We're going to check a couple other things here, but it doesn't seem like there's too, too much on this. And this is Rick Doblin. I mentioned him in another video, like he kind of slides into it. Um, starting to really understand who these major players were back in the day and uh, how they were all kind of connected together, who started what. It's really starting to make a lot of sense when you actually dive into the research. <laughs> so yeah, this is just another long article here. I'll probably uh, have to print up and uh, take a look at later. I'm not going to bore you guys with that, of course, here, but that's fascinating, guys. So they uh, did an experiment at a prison on 30, 32 prisoners, and they saw uh, a rate drop, a recidivism rate drop from 64% to 25%. That's fascinating, guys. So um, I think it's crazy that back in the day, 
Back in these times, 1961, 1963, they were doing these experiments. They're experimenting around with uh, psychedelics, mushrooms, and LSD and stuff. Like, this is crazy. I find it fascinating. Again, I'm going to print up some of these scientific articles here and look through them. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys are interested in learning more, I've been making a bunch of these vi uh, videos where I dive into some research. I've shown, like, an artist and uh, a housewife actually on LSD, and it shows them tripping, and it's fascinating. It's crazy to watch. So, so if you guys are interested in those, go check them out in the description box below or they should be popping up on the screen here. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh yeah, and on your way down there, go leave me a comment and uh, hit that like button. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am the Hungarian Experiment.